Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Baxter and I am a developer advocate for Bluemix at IBM. And today I'd like to talk to you about uh, the new uh, and improved IBM Container Service. So as of today, uh, we have officially uh, released uh, the IBM Container Service out into the wild. Uh, we've moved it out of beta um, and moved it into general availability. So uh, it is now officially production ready. Um, and uh, with that uh, move, we've, there's been a number of changes to the service. Um, so I'd like to, to do a quick walkthrough of the service today uh, and show you how you can use it and uh, hopefully get you familiar uh, with how it works. So um, you know, the first thing I'll notice is that um, uh, as of today, the, the UI a little bit in Bluemix here has changed along with the container service moving into uh, GA. Um, you'll notice uh, pretty much the same thing, but we now have little boxes for uh, information about the different types of, uh, uh, of runtime or computes that you have um, uh, running inside of Bluemix. So we have now uh, a little box for Cloud Foundry applications, containers, virtual machines, and services and APIs that you might be using. Um, uh, the one we're going to focus on today is uh, obviously con uh, containers. So if you just click on Start Containers, uh, you'll be brought to uh, a UI that looks much like this. Um, now, I've already started using my container service. If this is the first time uh, you're using it uh, as of today, uh, you will just see the IBM Liberty and IBM Node uh, circles here, as well as the Add Your Own circle here. Uh, now, if you had been using the service during the beta period, uh, you might be asking yourself, well, where are the, the containers that I've pushed to my registry during the beta period? Um, and uh, the answer is that uh, those containers are still there, uh, that your registry is still there, uh, but we've created a new registry uh, for the, the GA version of the IBM Container Service. Um, so uh, there is a way of, of migrating uh, your, uh, your containers from the beta version into the GA version, um, and I'll, I'll explain how that happens uh, in a quick second here. Um, but basically, uh, the IBM Container Service here uh, you'll you'll see, like I said, the three circles. Uh, you won't see this one here, but you'll see the other the other three. Um, and to get started setting up your uh, your registry, um, you, the first thing you want to do is just click on Add Your Own. Uh, and when you click on that, you will see a little dialog box comes up that says you need to set up your registry, uh, and basically it just asks you to give your registry a unique name. So give it some type of unique name that's meaningful to you click OK and then we'll, we will set up your registry. I've already uh, done that for my organization so I, I won't do that in this case. Um, but then uh, after you set up your registry you can actually go ahead and, and do the migration of your containers from the beta service to the, the GA service. Um, so if you go back to the dashboard and you head down to the container se service here section here uh, in the dashboard you'll see a little message that the containers is now uh, generally available in Bluemix. Um, and details that you can actually migrate your containers uh, from your the beta uh, service uh, to the production service uh, until July 31st. Uh, and if you click this link here, it'll be brought to some documentation that explains exactly how to do that. Um, so if you want to migrate your containers, you have some containers you want to keep and, and move over, um, then you can go ahead and follow these steps and uh, we'll migrate your containers into uh, the new uh, the new. Uh, 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 registry. Um, um, if you're not concerned about doing that, then, then you have to, don't worry about. Don't have to worry about doing that. Uh, the first thing uh, I like to just show you real quickly is um, how to uh, create a container from the UI. So click on Start Containers here, um, and uh, you. Uh, well, for this example, let's just pick um, uh, the IBM Liberty container, which everyone should have, um, because IBM uh, provides the IBM Liberty uh, Docker container as well as the IBM Node Docker container for everyone to use if they want to. Uh, and we're just going to spin up uh, an instance of this IBM Liberty container. So select the IBM Liberty container. It will be brought to a UI that looks uh, much like the, uh, kind of like the old UI from the beta period, although the fields have moved around uh, slightly. Uh, but as you can see, you can still deploy what's called a single container or a scalable group. So um, um, let me explain a little bit about what these uh, options are. Uh, a single container is uh, pretty much useful for you know short-term processes, maybe something that's going to be running for less than an hour or a couple of hours at the most, um, and is, is something that's lightweight um, and doesn't need um, um, the high availability provided by a scalable group. Uh, a scalable group uh, just gives you 
uh, a way of, um, of providing kind of high availability for your application for long running processes. You know, maybe you're deploying uh, a set of containers that um, uh, are going to uh, back a web application or something like that, and they need to be highly available and they're going to be around for a long time. Then you want to pick a scalable group uh, for that type of uh, application. Um, so in this case, let's just choose scalable group. We could pick either or, but we'll do scalable group for this in this case. Um, and you can just give your container group a name. We'll call this uh, demo liberty. And then how many instances you want. Uh, in this case, we'll just pick one, but you can pick any number of instances. Uh, and then you can pick the size uh, of the container. Uh, you'll notice that there's many more size options available to you uh, than there were uh, in the beta period. So um, that's a good thing. We're going to pick a tiny one with 512 megabytes of, of memory. Uh, and then pick your domain. And we'll do uh, at mybootmix.net here. And then enter your uh, uh, the port that you want uh, to expose. In this case, for Liberty, it's always 9080. Um, and then uh, there's also some advanced options here. So you could mount volumes just like you could during the beta period. Uh, you can bind to services if you want to as well. Um, uh, but we won't do that in this case. We'll just go ahead and click Create here. All right, you can see that our container has now started up and is available at this URL. So if I click on this URL, will be brought to the IBM Liberty uh, landing page here. So our container has successfully been deployed. So that's how you uh, create a container from the UI. Um, but now uh, I'm going to actually delete this container, uh, or container group in this case. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you, talk a little bit about the CLI. Um, now if you're familiar uh, with using Docker in general, you're probably familiar with interacting with Docker containers from the CLI as it's, it's the primary way of doing so. Um, and uh, uh, we also have a number of ways of, of interacting with containers uh, from the CLI uh, in Bluemix. Uh, and there's actually some changes in this, in this part of the container service as well uh, compared to the beta period. So um, the, the best way to learn more about that is to go to the documentation and uh, you'll see IBM, the IBM um, uh, setting up the CLI as one of the topics here in the documentation. And uh, you'll notice there's a couple of options here at the top, right at the top. Um, you can either interact, uh, continue to interact with the, um, the IBM Container Service, much like you did uh, during the beta period with the ICE plugin uh, or the ICE command line utility. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, has, you know, the benefits of basically you being already familiar with it if you're, if you're already um, are, uh, are, we're using the ICE CLI. You just need to uninstall the old version and install the new version. Um, but if you, uh, if you weren't uh, 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 using the ICE CLI or uh, perhaps you prefer doing, uh, uh, interacting with the, com with the container service in a different way, uh, you might want to consider using the new option, which is the Cloud Foundry plugin. A Cloud Foundry plugin is just a plugin into the Cloud Foundry command line utility, so you can use both the Cl Cloud Foundry command line utility to uh, manage your Cloud Foundry applications as well as your Docker containers that you have running in the, the IBM container service. Um, and also has the added uh, option of you being able to use the Docker command line utility natively to interact with the IBM Container Service. So um, I'm going to show you how to use the, the Cloud Foundry command line uh, plugin uh, in this video. So the first thing you need to do uh, when installing the Cloud Foundry plugin is satisfy some of the prerequisites for the plugin. Um, the first prerequisite is that you need to have Docker installed and you need to make sure you have Docker 1.6 uh, or greater installed. Um, and then you also need to make sure you have the Cloud Foundry uh, command, line command line utility already installed. And that needs to be at version 6.11.3 or greater. So I've already uh, installed uh, the latest and greatest versions of both of those. So uh, as you can see, if I do uh, Docker version from my command line, I see I have 1.6 installed. And if I do uh, CF uh, version, you see I have 6.12 installed. So I, I, my prerequisites have already been satisfied, so I don't need to do that. Um, once you have your, your Docker installed and Cloud Foundry installed, uh, then you can choose uh, uh, the correct command to install the plugin for your operating system. I'm on OSX, so I'm going to choose this one. Uh, and I'll just go copy that and go back to the command line and execute that command. And once the plugin's installed, you can confirm that it's installed just by doing CF plugins. And you should see that it's now listed here. So you see we have IBM containers now installed.
Now to get started using the IBM Containers plugin, it's pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you're logged in from the Cloud Foundry command line utility to Bluemix. So you can do CF login, just like you would do before, dash A, api.ng.bluemix.net. And then enter your credentials. Um, this is all the same as if you were using the uh, Cloud Foundry command line utility uh, without the plugin, so nothing has changed here. Um, you'll be asked, potentially asked to select your organization and space if you belong to more than one. Um, so I'll pick my organization and my space here that I want to use. And after that, um, the next thing you need to do uh, is log in via the, the IBM Containers plugin. So you can do CFIC login. And the great part about this is just uses the um, your currently logged in credentials for the command line utility as well as the space and organization you're already logged into to authenticate you against the IBM container service. So um, you don't have to enter all that stuff again like you would um, if you're using the ICE command line utility. Um, <clears throat> now at this point, the uh, the cloud uh, the uh, IBM containers plugin uh, presents you with a message that you have two options to continue to use the container service. You can either continue to use the plugin itself, so there's some example commands here, you know, CF, IF, IC, uh, et cetera, and then all your familiar Docker commands, or you can set a couple environment variables and then go ahead and use the Docker command line utility natively, just pointing to the IBM container service. So, um, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to using both methods. Um, you know, one, in, one disadvantage uh, that you might have if you choose to use the Docker command line utility uh, directly is that you wouldn't be able to interact with any other Docker host, right? For example, uh, lots of times I'll do uh, Docker builds um, and run Docker containers, testing them out locally on my local Docker on my local machine, uh, my local Docker host, um, and, and then go ahead and deploy them to Bluemix and build and deploy them to Bluemix. Um, if I chose to use the Docker command line utility, um, I wouldn't be able to. Um, uh, run my Docker containers or do my Docker builds locally. I have to do it all in the container service unless I switch these environment variables uh, back to pointing to my local um, uh, Docker host. So um, for me, I like to use the, the, the plugin to the Cloud Foundry command line utility because I can uh, continue to do my Docker builds and deploys locally if I want to using the native Docker command line utility. And then when I'm ready to do them in Bluemix, I can just use the plugin to get the Cloud Foundry command line utility to do that. Um, so it provides me a little bit more flexibility, but the choice is up to you. Uh, the options are there for whatever you'd like. So let's just, for example, uh, check out, see I can do CF um, uh, IC images and it will list uh, all the, the Docker images that I have in my repository, which should be the same three that we saw uh, in the UI. Uh, or and I can check which ones I have running. So I'll only have um, uh, if I do CFICPS. If I I only see one uh, Docker image running. If I do that. So if I want to, for example, start the IBM Liberty um, uh, container or start an IBM Liberty container from uh, my command line, um, uh, I can do that as well, just like I did from the uh, from the uh, from the UI before. So if I do uh, CF IC run uh, dash P and say, you know, I want port 9080 exposed uh, and the name uh, of the container I want to give it as I'll give it demo Liberty. And then uh, the, um, uh, the uh, container that I want to start is the uh, IBM Liberty one. So I'll just copy this here and paste it here. Um, and this, we're just going to start a single container in this case. We're not going to start a scalable group. Uh, but uh, just give you an idea of how you do this from the command line. Uh, and then if I run that, okay, we see that my container has now started. So I can confirm that just by doing CFICPS and we'll see which containers I have running. So I now have two containers running. You can see one is the, uh, the IBM Liberty container here. Um, and uh, I can also, for example, get the logs uh, from that container. So I, if I do uh, CFIP, uh, CFIC logs um, and uh, do uh, demo liberty. Um, we should see the logs from the container show up, which is a good thing here. So it means it's running. Um, now, the one thing that I, I didn't do here is I still have no um, public IP address assigned to this container. So I, I wouldn't be able to actually hit it in the browser. 
So what if I wanted to assign a public IP address to that? Well, I can see all IP addresses that I have uh, currently available to me. If I do uh, CF uh, IC IP list, we'll see uh, all the IP addresses that I currently have available to me. Uh, I have two, one that's already assigned here and one that is not assigned. So what if I wanted to, uh, um, I didn't have this extra IP address already assigned to me and I needed an IP address for my container. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, release that IP address and I'll show you how you request a new one. So uh, to release an IP address, you just do uh, CF IC IP release. And then you can just copy that IP address that you wanna release here. And then uh, if you wanna request one, so now if I do CF, I see IP list, I see I only have one and it's currently assigned to one of my containers that I have running. Um, so if I wanna request a new one for a new container that I've deployed that doesn't have one yet, I can do CF IC IP uh, request. And then you can see I now have obtained a new IP address. So if I do CF um, IC IP list, we'll see that I have two, one that's unassigned uh, and one that is assigned. Uh, and now I can go ahead and assign the new one to a container. So if I do uh, CF IC IP bind, uh, and then the new IP address, which is this one here. And uh, the, the name of the container I wanna bind it to, so you say demo liberty is the one that I wanna bind it to. And now uh, the IP address is now bound to my container. So if I do uh, CF IC PS, here, we should see that I now have that public IP address that is now assigned to my container. So I see 134.168.0.31 is now assigned uh, at port 90.80 uh, to my container. So I should be able to, for example, copy that IP address, um, head back to my browser here, open a new tab, and go to that IP address. And we see that now I have my container up and running. In addition, I can go back to the dashboard here in Bluemix and I'll see that um, I have my container here and it looks much like the container that I had deployed uh, from the UI before, except it's not a scalable group, it's just a single container. You see the public IP address is assigned, the port is there, uh, etc. all the same stuff as before. So uh, this is just a quick overview of the uh, new GA version of the IBM Containers uh, service. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, talk to you soon.